I believe taking the sauna regularly can be one of the best things for your health after exercise. Regular sauna use has been seen to be associated with up to 70% lower risk of heart disease mortality, 66% lower risk of dementia, 65% lower risk of Alzheimer's, and 40% reduced risk of all-cause mortality. Those are some incredible numbers, and I'm gonna break down the science-based protocol on how to achieve that. The temperature, the duration, the frequency, and the timing. Alright, here's the protocol. Four times a week, 70 degrees Celsius, which is 158 degrees Fahrenheit, 20 minutes per session. That's it. The evidence from that comes from a series of studies done in Finland by the world's most known sauna researchers, Dr. Jari Laukanen and his colleagues. They found that those taking a sauna four times per week saw a 70% lower risk of heart disease mortality compared to those taking a sauna only once per week. Those taking the sauna two to three times per week saw a 29% risk reduction. The scientists also adjusted for things like socioeconomic status, physical activity, and heart disease. And they found that taking the sauna four times per week compared to once was linked to even 77% lower risk of heart disease mortality, which is an even greater reduction. Again, those are quite impressive numbers. And remember, it's compared to once per week of sauna use. Imagine what the results would be if you were to compare it to zero times per week. The results could even be much bigger. In another study, Laukanen and colleagues found that taking a sauna four times per week compared to once resulted in a 66% lower risk of dementia and 65% lower risk of Alzheimer's disease. In this study, they also controlled for things like obesity, alcohol intake, smoking, blood pressure, and even resting heart rate to identify the effects of sauna alone on the risk of dementia. There are several other studies published by Laukanen that follow a similar trend line. Those people who take sauna more than four times per week have a much lower risk of all-cause mortality, heart disease mortality, and dementia. Now, some people might protest that hey, these are observational studies and you can't make any conclusions that it's the sauna that is giving those effects. They must be doing something else like eating a healthier diet, exercising, or being wealthier. Well, number one, the scientists doing this research obviously know about that risk and they control for these variables as much as they can to exclude this kind of a health user bias. Laukanen has actually done a study looking at this in 2022. He found that among people who had a lower socioeconomic status, which is typically associated with poorer health and a higher risk of mortality, those people still had a lower mortality risk if they went to the sauna over three times per week. This means that taking a sauna frequently mitigates the higher risk of death of having less money. And second, it's important to realize the cultural context where these studies are done. These studies are exclusively done in Finland. Sauna is an inseparable part of Finnish culture and identity. If you know anything about Finland or other Scandinavian countries, then almost every household has a sauna, both the wealthy and non-wealthy households. In fact, Finland has 3 million saunas out of a population of 5.5 million people. The saunas in Finland are everywhere, in every gym, in every apartment building, in most households, and there's also a lot of free public saunas that are very popular. What's more, saunas aren't considered a healthy activity in Finland, in Russia, or in other Scandinavian countries. They're just part of the culture. Everyone goes to the sauna. Your alcoholic smoking uncle would go to the sauna regularly, your grandma who makes you pancakes on the weekend, and all different kinds of people would go to the sauna in these countries, both the unhealthy and healthy people, all the time. I've been actually taking the sauna since I was a baby, my parents would wash us in the sauna every weekend. Here's a pic of me and my brother at the age of five at the top of the sauna. That's why it's hard to shrug off these findings as healthy user bias. Because both unhealthy and healthy, rich and poor people in Finland take the sauna pretty much all the time. It's part of being Finnish. Alright, let's talk about the temperatures because that's a hot topic. The benefits of the sauna are primarily mediated by an increase in body temperature that mimics a fever. Your heart rate also obviously increases as the body tries cooling you down, which mimics cardiovascular exercise. But that is the result of the body temperature rising. Based on the studies done by Laukanen, the optimal temperature for getting those benefits is 70 degrees Celsius or 156 degrees Fahrenheit. You could also go up to 80 degrees Celsius, but there's no evidence that it's better or necessary. In fact, too high temperature could actually be harmful. It's been found that sauna temperature temperatures above 100 degrees Celsius or 212 degrees Fahrenheit are linked to a small 2% higher risk of dementia over 20 years. What about the duration of the sauna? How long should you stay in it? In a 2015 study by Laukanen, those who took the sauna longer than 19 minutes per session saw a 52% lower risk of sudden cardiac death compared to those taking the sauna for 11 minutes. Those taking the sauna for 11 to 19 minutes saw only a 7% reduction.
instruction. What it means is that you should really try to stay in a sauna for 20 minutes in a row. If you're just starting with sauna use, you might not be able to do it because you need a few weeks of heat adaptation. If you're feeling faint or dizzy, then you should just get out and cool down. Start slow with only aiming for 10 minutes and then getting out to cool down a bit, and then finishing off with another 10 minutes in the sauna. But if you're already adapted to the heat, then you should just stay in the sauna for 20 minutes in a row. I want to take a quick break to let you know about my favorite wellness devices, which are the Bond Charge Red Light Therapy devices. You've probably seen many of your favorite longevity influencers using these Red Light Therapy devices, but do they actually work? Yes, they do. Red Light Therapy has been shown to have many benefits on skin anti-aging, hormone optimization, pain management, and even exercise performance. I use my device every day for 15 minutes, especially during the winter months when there's not much sunlight. It increases my energy in the morning and makes my skin glow. Just check out the testimonials on the Bond Charge website for the before and after pictures of other people. Most Rela therapy devices don't have the right wavelengths of light, which might mean you're not getting the claimed benefits. Bond Charge uses the exact wavelengths of light used in research, and they also have near-infrared light that's beneficial to the joints. Head over to bondcharge.com and use the code SIEM, S-I-I-M, for a 15% discount. One common question I get is about cold exposure. It's very popular for people who go to the sauna to then jump into an ice bath or take a cold shower. I know, it feels great, I've done it since I was a child. Unfortunately, there's no research about this kind of contrast therapy and its benefits for longevity, so we don't know if it provides any additional benefits. There is research about cold water immersion alone, showing that it helps with immune system function, lowering inflammation, reducing muscle soreness, improving mood, and increasing energy expenditure. So I can't really say if you should combine the sauna with an ice bath or not, because there's no research about that. But whenever I do have the opportunity to jump in an ice bath after the sauna, then I usually do it. What about timing of the day? When should you do the sauna? There's no research about that either, but there are a few common sense principles you should follow. Don't take the sauna too close to bed. It can increase your heart rate and increase stress hormones that make it harder for you to fall asleep. Ideally, the sauna should not be taken at least 4 hours before bed. You could do the sauna in the morning, which is a great way to start the day. However, doing the sauna in the afternoon or later in the day could be safer for your cardiovascular system and could also be better. You shouldn't do the sauna before working out, because an elevated body temperature can decrease exercise performance. Regular sauna use has been seen to enhance cardiovascular performance through enhanced heat adaptation and lowering your body temperature during exercise. But if you take the sauna immediately before working out, it will reduce performance. Sauna and exercise combined go very well together. A 2022 randomized controlled trial saw that exercise combined with sauna lowered systolic blood pressure and total cholesterol and increased VO2 max more than exercise alone. The best time to take the sauna, in my opinion, is after lifting weights. That's because it's going to support recovery by increasing blood flow to the muscles and increasing the expression of growth hormone. In a 2021 study, taking 12 sauna sessions over the course of two weeks was seen to result in greater muscle mass and bone density than the control group not taking the sauna. So taking a sauna after exercise could increase your VO2 max and muscle mass more than if you were to just exercise alone. When it comes to the different types of saunas like infrared saunas, steam saunas, etc., then it doesn't really matter which type you take. As I said earlier, the benefits of the sauna come from an elevated body temperature, which you can achieve with different types of saunas. You can do it with a dry sauna, a steam sauna, an infrared sauna, an infrared sauna blanket, doing cardio with a sweatsuit, or sitting in a hot tub. Infrared saunas do have unique benefits that you don't get from regular saunas, namely the infrared wavelengths of light. These lights can penetrate your tissues much deeper, and they can stimulate collagen synthesis and have tissue-specific effects. If I had to choose only one type of sauna to do for the rest of my life, then I would choose the infrared sauna. However, you can easily do both, and both work. Taking a sauna is best combined with exercise, and exercise is still more important and more powerful than the sauna. That's why you should follow an evidence-based workout plan optimized for health and longevity. Check out my video about the topic next. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.